welcome to Virtual TrekCon. Uh, my name is Thomas Supra, a makeup artist uh, for uh, uh, quite a few years. I uh, worked on uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Next Generation, Voyager, Enterprise, uh, let's see, uh, Star Trek, uh, Starfleet Academy, CD-ROM Interactive with uh, some of the original cast. Uh, Bill Shatner, uh, Walter Koenig, and George Takei were on board for that. Um, let's see, um, Star Trek Generations and Star Trek First Contact. Uh, so uh, uh, about almost 10 years worth of Star Trek in my life. and. Uh, um, uh, we're here to uh, recreate something from the show, and uh, this is one of my Emmys. Anyway, this is from uh, uh, Deep Space Nine, uh, Distant Voices, and here we have hey, our lovely actor. I'm Rico Anderson. I am an actor. I've been in Star Trek Renegades. I was on the Orville, and today I am a uh, prosthetic model. So here we are. Well, thank you so much. Really, seriously, it's quite the trek to my place. Let's see what you oh, did there. It's an honor. God, yeah. Seriously. Really, really so, um, so here's uh, the front and the wig. Um, I hand tied that. Hand tied all the hair pieces. Um, going to recreate this the as close to what we had on Star Trek Next Gen. Let's see, this is a forehead piece that I sculpted, and um, it's kind of styled after um, uh, one uh, my buddy Mike Smithson did for uh, the episode, I should know the name of that episode, um, where we had the uh, three original Klingons um, come. Oh, for DS9? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, gosh, with the albino. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway, so this this is uh, kind of styled after uh, the, the uh, William Campbell forehead. And, uh, which was one of my favorites. So that fits nicely. And then we have two different noses here. It's not too big. No. <laughs> so. Now, this forehead appliance actually is available at a place called FX Warehouse in Philadelphia. So, okay, and we're going to go with that nose. I happen to have two noses. Actually, that's one of the interesting things about the show is, like, we'd have a forehead, and then we'd have nose number one, and then we'd have nose number two, because everyone's noses would be different. And we had a wide range of actors coming in with different noses. So, basically, a forehead's a forehead, but we'd have a box of noses, and we'd have to pick our noses. Ah! It just doesn't stop. Can you tell us about your, your first day on the set of Star Trek? Oh, okay. Well, this is interesting, I guess. Um, I guess. Now, um, it, it, I don't know. It was, it was one of those things where I grew up with Star Trek like so many of us, and, and I, I love Star Trek, and uh, never thought I'd get a chance to work on Star Trek. And Anyway, so um, what happened was um, I, I've been working in the film industry for a while and I finally got all my hours and everything uh, for the union and I I, uh, I paid my entry dues and um, I was on my way back home and back then I had a pager because that's what you did you had a pager back then and <laughs> Um, you know, kids who are listening are like, what the hell is a pager? Uh, exactly. Um, it, it was not a mobile phone. Uh, but anyway, ended up getting a page. Same day I paid my entry dues, right? And now I'm in the union. And I'm, I'm driving back through the desert to get up here because I was living up here at the time. I, and it, it's long. I won't get into that part of the story. But anyway, I'm driving. I pull over and... It's, it's a 212 number, or not 212, 213 number, and I'm like, oh, it's L.A., and and I called, and I'm like, hello, um, uh, just uh, returning this page, and and uh, I, the voice on the other end of the phone is like, hello, this is Jeannie, uh, uh, Michael Westmore's uh, assistant. Um, are you available to come in and work this afternoon? And I'm like, uh, 
um, no. <laughs> and and, and uh, anyway, there was a pause and she's like, hang on a second. And you could hear like her, you know, hand over the phone and her talking to Mike and, and uh, she gets back and it's like, can you come in tomorrow morning? And I'm like, yeah. And so that was like my first day and I was scared to death. Um, and it was Bajorans and, you know, it's like a very simple makeup. And, um, you know, when DS9 started to make it even more simple, um, the original um, Ensign Row had a little, it was like a T, a little crossbar. And, um, well, um, to make it easy on everyone, they took that bar away and it was just this ridge. And, and people were still screwing it up. Like the ridges go this way, not that way. And people would be gluing noses on upside down. And you're in the union? Okay, whatever. <laughs> it's like, but I was just, I was just telling the guys here, um, a lot of people who worked on the show when I got on it never watched uh, Star Trek. They weren't into it. They had no idea what they were, do you know, like what the characters were. Okay, so this adhesive I'm using is a silicone medical adhesive. Back on Next Gen, we used a medical, a silicone medical adhesive that was available back then called 355. 355 medical adhesive was amazing. It was really strong. And, um, and this is a really good duplicate. Okay. So I'm painting the adhesive on the skin and on the prosthetic, not going on to the edge, keeping the glue about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Okay. All right. Mama, your baby boy is about to get a new floor. <laughs> what's, what's the most extensive makeup job you've ever had, Rico? I would say it was a combination of uh, when I was Boros and Renegades. And also, uh, also the Orville as well. Um, the Orville was more of a pullover, um, kind of like just pulling, like putting a, a cap on. Then they they applied the prosthetics around that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, silicone, right? Yeah, all silicone. Yeah. yeah. See, but I was I'm never allergic big, or anything. Okay. To it, so. I'm, I'm not a big fan of silicone for like big stuff because it's heavy and you can't breathe. Foam, you can. You know, it's like when I was on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, they, like, the stunt guys would be sweating through the appliances. Like, you would actually, like, press the, the foam piece and, like, sweat would come out. And you're like, uh, Oof. yeah. Uh, that's you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 firmly press that on. So uh, a lot of interesting things. I've got a little booklet actually I put together um, when we were doing test makeups. Um, our generation's Klingons had to be painted differently because we had different lighting and uh, it was more like DS9 lighting and um, so uh, the Klingons normally were like a warm chocolate color, um, ST1. Um, ST1 stands for Star Trek One. There's um, a series, ST1, ST2, ST3. These were created for um, Star Trek. Um, a company called RCMA makes them. And um, they come in grease paint, or not grease paint, but like a foundation. And then they also come in um, a rubber mask grease paint. Um, Anyway, um, so as I was saying, we had Next Generation, Generations, and DS9 running at the same time, and I was swinging between all three. Like, I would come in on a call for DS9 doing, like, some big alien or whatever, and then 
like you know go over to um, uh, next gen you know for uh, the uh, uh, post apocalyptic court you know with Q and and uh, which was interesting that's a story and a half too <laughs> anyway and then uh, then um, you know dirtying up uh, uh, survivors you know of of uh, Guinan's race who were saved by uh, the Enterprise B. Anyway, um, so we had all these Klingons for the the Duras sisters, uh, bird of prey, and um, I forgot what my call was. My call was um, it wasn't terrible. I think it was like. Uh, I think it, it was like 6.30 or, or not, six, or like 6.12 in the morning. I'm like, that's not bad. Considering on Star Trek, I would I would have like a two four, uh, 42 call in the morning. And that's the union thing, why it's all broke up like that. But anyway, I, I would have these like ridiculously early calls. And uh, eyes closed, please. And um, so I had like this 6.12 call. And... Well, I slept through my alarm, and and there's a couple phone calls, and in my dream, I just remember hearing like this bell ringing, and then I finally woke up, and I'm like, damn it, it's my phone, and I'm like, reach over, landline, that's how long ago this was, I picked it up, I'm like, hello, <laughs> and it's one of the makeup artists, you know, back, back, uh, you know, at the upstairs lab, as we called it, it's like, you plan on coming in today? <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god. I didn't even shower. I just threw some clothes on and like <sighs> drove as fast as I could from like Beverly Hills to like Paramount. And at this point, there's a bit of traffic and I'm like, I'm I'm either gonna get a ticket and get fired or I'm gonna get fired and then get a ticket or, you know, I just, oh my god. I was stressed and freaking out and anyway. I, I got in and we we were given like two and a half hours to get the makeups done and I got my Klingon done in like 45 minutes but I'd been doing Scott Berry's makeups for for a while because he was like one of our utility actors who could play a Bajoran who could play you know, a Klingon, um, had a great face for a Klingon, um, but, uh, yeah, um, got it, got it done, and, and I even got a couple compliments that day, you know, people, you know, were saying, you know, in fact, Scott was saying, I think this is the best job you've done on this makeup, you know, and it's like, well, cool, thank you, man. So, it would it would be uh, interesting. Like um, sometimes we'd have different extras who would be new, or like we would have guest stars who would you know they'd never been a Klingon before, and and uh, and I was everyone's like oh, you want like they'd be sitting in another makeup artist chair and they'd be asking all these Klingon questions, and it's like. You want to know about Klingons? Ask that guy over there. And it's mm -hmm. like, super not. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. you know, you want to know about Klingons. And, and uh, so, yeah, once again, the, the Klingon guy, you know. Back then, I actually knew little bits of terminology in, in, in Klingon. And, you know, I could really geek out. But, you know, I'm old and forgot most of that. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, when you learn a second language, but if you don't speak it all the time, <laughs> so you actually knew a lot of the, a lot of the uh, dialogue. Well, I, I I knew some, you know, and and uh, and especially when it came to like weaponry and, and and vehicles, it's like I knew, you know, I knew all about the vehicles and uh, for Klingons. Yes, yeah, I, I just. I liked them. They were just dirty and mean looking, you know. Like even even the original D7, there was just something so 
you wouldn't want to see that decloak in front of you, you know, because the rear section of it, it's it's like in an attack position. And then there's this long neck with this like kind of Mongolian looking, you know, fortress, <laughs> you know, and pretty intimidating. Yeah. I mean, and, and then they just, you know, they're just there's just something about them. And like when the photon torpedo tube mm. like lights up and you're like oh shit you know you you are you are in for it you know so the d7 was the that was the next gen one uh no d7 was the original oh, the original yeah one. yeah oh, yeah okay, okay. and uh, there was the uh uh birds of prey that you know f uh, featured a lot on uh, ds not our uh, next gen next gen but yeah. uh, next gen um introduced the vorcha class which was the big kind of duck egg, blue, green, kind of really minty color. <laughs> it was really odd looking, um, but it still had a lot of, you know, the uh, Battlecruiser D7 kind of quality, but meteor. It was like a D7 on steroids. And um, there was a lot of really interesting specs about what that ship could do. And, uh, we never really got to see it do any of that, um, sadly. It's kind of like the uh, captain's yacht. Mm. You know, always wanted an episode where we actually see that. Like a Voyager. Yeah. You you always saw it. Yeah. You know, you, it never detached. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's. Um, I always thought the the one that uh, was used like in the voyage home always had that especially like the scene where they decloak right on top of the ship mm -hmm. the the ship in the water yeah that was like that needs to happen in real life <laughs> <laughs> but, but not a ship <laughs> like in the water like like seriously like the whalers and stuff like that yeah i think yeah i i think that uh <laughs> i mean that would do it put, you know put the you know <laughs> fear into them but uh hmm. like now you're the hunted <laughs> how does that feel <laughs> anyway well nimoy yeah mission accomplished on that one yeah <laughs> okay i'm just trying to get the the nostril areas are always such a weird area to try to get down because those little edges will flip up. God, this is bringing back so many memories. <laughs> Let's see. You have, you have one maybe like favorite memory or something that always sticks out when you think about your, your time on, on Star Trek? Yeah, I can't really talk about those though. <laughs> <laughs> those memories. <laughs> Um, you and John Luke in the, in the uh, supply closet? Uh huh. No, actually, <laughs> actually, um, is that the part you're going to edit out? Actually, uh, this this one friend of mine, she uh, she did wardrobe, um, and uh, she came to visit me on the set because, like, a total Star Trek geek. Like, anyway, we ended up making out on the transporter pad. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's just come on. That's that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. How many people can say that? Right? <laughs> and and right. and a turbo lift. <laughs> and, nice. Yeah. So when you know we went in, it's like, you know, I I, I pulled the door shut and, and did the whoosh <laughs> sound. And and yeah. <laughs> It's like, Nowadays, you would take a selfie either before, during, or after. Exactly. Just, you know, video it. Right. <laughs> TikTok, you know. Can I open my eyes now? Or oh, yeah. God. Uh, you can open, actually. Okay. Hello. So, um. <laughs> Making out on the turbo lift. Getting busy. This is something we use on track a lot. Um, it's called Cabo Patch. It's basically thickened. Yes, nine most. Is that exactly what you spent most of your days on? Um, yes. Yeah, I, 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 I was on. I liked it there actually, and it's weird when I got to do Marina's makeup, you know, on our film Fifth Passenger. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
shameless plug. Mm -hmm. um, wait, wait, nice, yeah, nice. I mean that that to me was like a big dream come true because I always, ah, oh, Counselor Troy, she was just gorgeous, and you know I just yeah. loved that character. I loved her character, you know, and and you know working with her, I was always, yeah. I was always a, a bit intimidated because everyone you know, was like, oh, you know, don't don't talk to Marina, you know, and did it. Mm -hmm. And I told her that and she's like that. That's horrible. And she's like, anyway, and, and I did. I actually did talk to her and got her autographs. Like, you know, probably the third day I worked on this show. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Nipped it in the butter. Yeah. Well, it's weird because I was told, it's like, you know, you get hired on Star Trek. Don't act like you're a fan of it. And I'm like, well, what's the point? You know, it's like, you know, a fan's going to care more about the look of the show than like somebody who's just, it's a paycheck. You know, that's that's my opinion. You know. Did you do Did you do uh, Armin's Ferengi? I know you did some of the Ferengis. Did you do Armin's? I no, that was that was a friend of mine uh, who, uh, her name's Karen Westerfield. She she was given like um, a lot of creative licensing, and that's why she ended up, you know, kind of like doing that little maroon thing around the eyes that mm -hmm. only Armin got. Oh yeah. Let's see. I'm gonna. That's a little. Uh, to pay tape. How's that? I feel like I just got a facelift. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. I have a question. Yes. It seems like there were more aliens on Deep Space Nine than like next gen. So was that making either your job harder? Or well, see, cooler. Uh, yeah, I mean, or was I wrong uh, even in that assessment? Well, now because it was a space station and you had aliens, you know, constantly right. coming and going and you know hanging out and stuff like, right. you know, and um, and you had I, a lot of your usual suspects. I is, yeah, I I loved it. Um, you know, <sighs> the Kardashians <laughs> are not my favorite um, makeups. Um, <laughs> In any century. <laughs> I mean, Cardassians. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't like them much either. <laughs> anyway, but uh, yeah, the uh, Cardassians, they they were kind of like, they were, they were odd. I, I just never, yeah, I never, yeah. Just never vibed with yeah, them. Yeah, I mean. Never jived. And, well, like the thing is, they, they were also like, um, they were a lot of work, you know, like, and not fun work. It was, it was kind of like uh, the time where we went to Odo's planet and um, we saw, you know, other Odo founders. founders thank you. And, and, uh, and at first I was like, oh, that's a pretty simple makeup, right? Ooh. You put that piece on, if it's slightly off, it looks like it's way off. I mean, you could have it dead on, and it looks dead on. But if it's just like the slightest bit off, it just it looks malformed. And it's I mean, it's a precise precision type application. And with the Cardassians, it was like the damn neck thing. It's like you'd put one side down, and then you get the other one, and it would be like this, and you're like, ah. Cardassians. And, yeah. I mean, they were kind of a. Pain, and they were maintenance too, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, because their damn s costumes, they look great in that green armor and all that stuff. It was like a neoprene wetsuit and, and then like silicone armor. And I'm like, okay, so it's August in Hollywood and we're filming. Yeah. Good Somebody times. had to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. On a Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was this one episode. Uh, we're, uh, uh, oh, it, was a, it was weird driving into work. We were in Sand Canyon, um, and uh, there was a um, quarry where they were mining in real life. And, and uh, um, you know, back then we had maps, and I had a map on my call sheet. And I'm, like, trying to figure out, like, where I'm going, and I'm, like, driving, and I'm, like, okay. And it's just getting warmer and warmer as the sun's coming up. And all of a sudden I look in the distance, and in the side of this, like, mountain it's like blackened and there's like this big skid mark and then a half buried spaceship and I'm like son of a bitch that's that's kind of trippy looking Ooh. and if anyone was driving and didn't know this they'd be like calling 911 is like ah Roswell anyway <laughs> He's so I, I got there and I was like this is the coolest looking thing and 
So we had Klingons, Cardassians, and I, I believe Renee was with us uh, that day, and it was just, it was probably, it probably got up to about 108 degrees, and, um, mm. well, you all know what the costumes are. Oh, my God. Mm. Good times. Yeah, it was so gross. <laughs> like, <clears throat> especially, wait till you get this wig on. It's so hot. I mean, you have hair, you know. It's like if you shaved your head, you'd notice, like, the big difference. Wait till you get this much hair on. You're going to be like, oh, God. <laughs> it's Yeah, it, you know, it's it's crazy. Well, I remember when, when we had that for the uh, Star Trek Earth tour. Oh, we, we had to wear and that. And you were out in the... In the heat during the summer, and... We would wear those. We would wear those headpieces, and it would be so hot on certain days where just taking that off, you would feel the heat escape your body, and sometimes it would kind of throw you off because I guess the chemistry of it all kept the heat in there. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you like, it was easy to take off because you know we had to take breaks and stuff, but it it, it was never glued to our face like this is. Right. So, but it was still it, it was still pretty on there so it was it was it was great though i see i love all of this i i love i i would do this every day i love the fact that i played what i played uh in prosthetics and renegades i love the fact that i was i was cast as as the mocklin doctor wearing the prosthetics i mean i i love this stuff it's like golden to me man i love the fact that doug does this for a living doug jones you know it's yeah like ah <laughs> Excuse me, I need to get some uh, paint off my skin. It's the best. Ooh. Yeah, you can feel all the splits in your cuticles when you uh, spray alcohol on, on your fingers. And yeah, not the kind oh. you drink either. No, oh, <laughs> 99 ice propanol. Fun. Ow. <laughs> so now this is the part where everything sets in. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're going to start getting some color on. Yeah. So this is a little bit of the ST1 and 2. Now compared to any of the actors who are like regulars or recurring, which which one would be close to what I'm currently wearing? You know, it's um, it's interesting um, because the forehead is, is, you know, styled after Bill Campbell, you know, and, and uh, Relics, was that the episode? I Was that... Anyway. Relics was Scotty. Okay. Um, and the only Klingon in that was Worf. Yeah. Now I can't. I can't think. But anyway, yeah. Uh, but uh, Bill Campbell um, uh, reprising his role uh, yeah. from, you know, the Trouble with Troubles, mm -hmm. and um, and John Calicos and Michael Ansar. God, that was for a Star Trek fan. That was just like Valhalla. You know, it was like, whoa, what the hell? You know, it's like I'm working mm -hmm. with the. You know, it, oh, there's no three. Yeah. Oh. What was what was the episode where they where they revisited the no with triples? No, this was actually uh, an episode where they're old men, uh -huh. and they're uh -huh. fighting this this enemy called the albino, and um, uh, but they had ridges. Yes, they yeah, and and oh, the costumes. <sighs> poor poor Bill, he was really having a hard time with that, mm. and. Um, because he didn't have to do that in the original series. Yeah, it was, it, yeah. Except for the, I guess, the mustache. Or whatever. Yeah, and the, the costumes were, you know, just polyester, like pants and, mm. you know, tunic. But, um, yeah, it was it was um, interesting because, you know, when the guys came, you know, we, we had to do, like, the um, uh, dental impressions because they also had got teeth this time around. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> and I just remember when Michael and Sarah came in, it was like, oh, my God, this like, oh my gosh, it's yeah. Jeannie's husband. Anyway, no, but uh, it was so cool because for me, like I'm saying, yeah, it's just it, it was uh, it was such an honor, you know, to to be there with you know these guys who who you know were my childhood, you know, and uh, you know wanted to grow up and be just like them. I wanted to be a Klingon. Actually, I preferred aliens over humans, you know. I, what, what does that say about me? Like, growing up, for me, chin up, please, um, with the original series, I, I, uh, I think um, Spock meant the most to me. Like, you know, like, 
the guy that I could relate to. It's like mm -hmm. I wanted, uh, you know, it's like, oh boy, we're diving into personal stuff. Uh, but it's when you, you don't have a great childhood and it's like, you know, this is a great way of like dealing with the emotional part of it by mm -hmm. not having any. Mm -hmm. And and I, I loved that about Spock. It was like, you know, and then like, what was that line that uh, um, Shatner says, Kirk says <laughs> about, uh, you know, the most human, you know, at, at Spock's funeral? Oh, out of yeah. all the... Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. You, now, okay, as it, fans, you, we should know yes, this. Yes. You know... Uh, out of all the beings I've encountered in the galaxy, his was the most... Human. The most... <laughs> You know, <laughs> it was like that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know, goosebumps. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. You know, it just there was something, you know, so wonderful about Spock. You know, and yeah. and I I love the idea that he was smart and stuff like that. I mean, you know, the the characters. You know, there was so much love for all the characters. You know, it's like, you know, they they all you know meant something to me. And mm -hmm. and uh, so anyway. Um, I'm going to um, uh, go in now with a different product. Um, let's see, this is an alcohol-based makeup. Okay, Skin Illustrator. Um, it's activated uh, with alcohol. Aren't, aren't most things? <laughs> right. <laughs> I've done some of my best performances, I know, huh? What? <laughs> could do that <laughs> oh we all drank on Star Trek I'm just joking <laughs> <laughs> how do you think these ideas for these aliens oh come my around gosh. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever do any makeup for, for uh, Jeffrey Combs uh, I actually didn't um, uh, I you know I can't remember who did his makeup um, uh, no it was <laughs> It was intense working with him because, like, that character was such a creepy, not nice guy, you know. And and like watching him act, it, that was the other thing. A lot of people who aren't into Star Trek or whatever, it's like these were dramas, you know. That they, they were all, you know, morality plays. As you know, quoting Michelle Nichols, you know, it's like amazing, you know. And and I just remember like. Oh, here's the story. Um, <laughs> um, there was a uh, episode of DS9 that uh, we uh, worked with Tony Todd um, as uh, Cisco's son, grown up, mm -hmm. and we aged him progressively, and was nominated for an Emmy for that. I remember that? And uh, yes. seriously, my you know I don't like patting myself on the back about much, but like we did a beautiful job. Camille Calvay, Scott Wheeler, and myself, like, you know, aging Tony. And, like, I remember sitting there watching him act and choking up. Like, he, like, the tears running down his face. Like, this man is one of the most incredible actors, just freaking amazing actors. And, and such a lovely human being, you know, and it was... It was so wonderful seeing him, you know, not in a Klingon makeup or whatever. Uh, this way, please. And and just him, you know, being him, acting. And it was, yeah, just mm. one of the most gracious, one, wonderful human beings. Like, oh, so talented. But, like, once in a while you've got those moments, you know, like, where you're watching an actor perform and, and they've drawn you in. You know, it's it's... That doesn't happen a lot. I'm jaded, you know. <laughs> but great memories. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It just got to do uh, John Calicos's makeup. Uh, I was I was assisting uh, Camille uh, when we were doing uh, his return of the this episode where they're going after the Sword of Kalos. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I ended up doing um, Rick, Rick Pas Pasquale? 
oh gosh, please don't, you know, send me hate mail on this one. Uh, the pronunciation of his last name. It's kind of like the pronunciation of my last name. Really simple, right? <laughs> anyway, so um, Rick was playing the, the son of Duras all grown up. So a very unlikable character. And uh, that, that was a wonderful, you know, wonderful uh, episode to work on. But um, it, was, it was great working with John Calicos again and sitting and chilling with him and talking to him about, mm. you know, like his career. Mm. Like how many, you know, and it's weird because it was kind of one of those seven degrees or six degrees or whatever of separation things. My granddad worked with him on Battlestar Galactica. Mm. And now you're working with yeah, him. Yeah, it's, you know, it's... <laughs> how cool is that? Yeah. And, um, but John Calicos' delivery on things is so incredible, so, you know, classic Shakespearean. Hmm. So, um, interesting story, because I was on track a lot, and, um, you know, uh, Dennis Madalone, uh, Danger Dennis, our stunt coordinator, um, taught me how to um, sword fight uh, with a bat lift and uh, some of the other... Um, blades, Klingon blades, and uh, it was it was really interesting. Uh, there's there's a very distinct way of, of handling uh, a bat lift, so you don't accidentally puncture yourself, um, because it's a weapon that could actually hurt you uh, when you're trying to, you know, kill somebody else. Uh, anyway, so... Uh, I already had a little bat lift training, right? And so I was sparring with these rubber-coated wood bat lifts, or battle ones, um, with Rick and Son of Duras. And uh, we were sparring back and forth, and he's in full Klingon armor. I'm just, like, wearing, like, shorts and a T-shirt. <laughs> so, you know, I, I didn't want to get jabbed anyway. So, uh, yeah, we, we were going at it pretty good, and then... He, he came down and hit my, my blade, and I locked it so he couldn't move and kicked it in and got him right in the ribs right here. And, uh, you know, <laughs> we were so enthralled in the moment, he, like, let out a big Klingon, roar, you know, and he was, you know, it was <laughs> hilarious. But anyway, um, some of the other makeup people, you know, are looking at me like, you're an idiot. I'm like, God, I'm having a good time. It's like, some people are really stiff. I'm like, this will happen once in your freaking life. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. enjoy this, you know. Well, look, 20 years later now, who's, who's talking about a great moment yeah. on the set of Star Trek? And, you know, I, I am totally grateful to Michael Westmore. I mean, Mike, you know, I always felt like he had to put up, you know, with a a lot of bullshit in general but like you know I didn't want to contribute to it and I always felt like you know like kind of like uh you know it just you know I, I just don't want to be a liability you know it's, he's a great boss and and I remember one time you know he came up to the upstairs lab and we were all sculpting and I I fell asleep I was sculpting and I like fell asleep in my sculpture and and Mike came in and I like snapped awake and he's like no dude you know we didn't say dude he goes ah Tom just there's see those mats down there just that's what they're you just go you know and I'm like I I can't do that he's like no no I I take I'll take a little nap you know and I'm like ah <laughs> but uh, yeah I, I I definitely didn't you know feel it was appropriate and I was. It's like, oh God, I'm gonna lose my job. Anyway. <laughs> I'm just doing a little highlighting, um, you know, for these ridges to, you know, bring them out a bit. It's all about contour, you know, just like a YouTube video. They, they haven't, actually, they haven't brought, they haven't, uh, they haven't brought a, not saying I'm jocking for 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 a wharf's part. No, that's yeah, that's his, going all the way. Well, but. his son. Yeah. You know. Alexander. Yeah. Did he die? 
Did he? No. Oh, no. The well, actor, the actor, the the actor, actor passed away. Yeah. No, the character. Didn't the character die? No. Oh, didn't? No, no. Alexander's still there. Okay, so this is going to be... Um, you'll know when to open your eyes when it's not wet. Um, so, so this is just easier on your actor. You know, like... And so I, I would just... I started going... This is just, you know... And then it caught on and everyone was doing it. And... Uh, which, yeah, it's cool. Oops. But the aqua color, because it's not greasy, a lot of people would use rubber mask grease and stuff. And Well, using something greasy, you're, you're, it's maintenance. And I'm like, I want something bulletproof. I don't want to have to, you know, keep messing with stuff. And the other thing is, um, on track, Mike Westmore would have me do my makeup in the morning, put together a bag. Somebody would watch my actor on set while I would be sculpting or painting one of the big heads, um, you know, doing something, you know, uh, other than being on set. And so. I wanted to make sure that no one really had to do much to, you know, my, my uh, actors. And you would always have these makeup artists who would try to change your makeup and take pictures of it and claim it as theirs. And it's like, that's just not cool. Um, that happened to a buddy of mine constantly. And I'm like, geez. I don't know if I'm at liberty to mention names. But, uh. Okay, I just lost my brush. Okay. Uh, uh, there it is. <laughs> Brain. Well, that's in your hand? Yeah. <laughs> Brain. What is this brain? Okay. If you were uh, a snake. <laughs> uh, you know, one thing that I thought was kind of like wasted. Um, they, they, they never brought back like a Klingon having a Todd, uh, like like uh, Christopher Lloyd. Mm. Sorry if I was a little jabby there. I just you know, okay, I wear contacts. That's the, oh, shit. yeah. That's okay. Are away. you all right? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. okay. All right. But but you do remember in Next Generation they did show a Targ. Really. It was like I think the first or maybe the second season. Oh, it was it like a hallucination thing yeah. or something? Oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Worf was like, "Hey, okay, this I can, is my pet." Have you opened your eyes and look up, please? Oh, it's like that really depressing animated um, episode of uh, Star Trek with with uh, young Spock and his uh, Salat. Or mm. Salat, or however it's pronounced. Um, oh my God, that that's like yeah, that that was that was like heavy, like for kids, you know, to be watching. You know what I'm talking about, right? The animated series. Yeah. Like when he had his, uh, it was like a bear or something yeah, like that. He yeah, he had to euthanize it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Spoilers. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't watched it by now. Yeah. Forty years. Right. Thanks, Tom. Jeez. Mm. You know what, something else that really drove me up a wall about Next Gen and like all the uh, television um, Klingons, none of them had pink blood and it really ups I wanted to work mm. with pink blood Klingons and, and, and Mike, Mike jokingly said that's only for movie Klingons. <laughs> <laughs> Only movie Klingons get pink blood. Now, Those were the Paramount Klingons. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. <clears throat> but now I, I loved, I loved that. I thought it was, it, it was truly alien. And and um, you, you like, know what they should do? They hmm. should go back and for like the fortieth anniversary, they should just CGI every episode that had Klingon blood. CGI it pink. Yeah. I'm, they could easily do it. They could totally do oh, it. Oh yeah.
you know, like when they're cutting their hands to do blood oaths and all that kind of stuff. It's mm-hmm. like, you know. But yeah, I caught that too. I, I think that's one of those one things that, you know, you just kind of, eh, well, we'll just overlook it. Yeah, it just, <laughs> I liked it. I, I mean, and I thought it was interesting because like here are these big tough Klingons, right? And they've got like this kind of like really happy, pretty pastel blood. I'm like, it just... <laughs> Did they say what the reason behind pink blood was, or did somebody just say? Well, you know? I've heard different stories from like the makeup department and stuff that it wasn't supposed to be actually pink. It was supposed it was supposed to be something else like lavender or not lavender, but like violet or I, I, like purple or something. And it it photographed that way or I don't know. And so it, it, something got lost in translation. Just doing a little bit of highlight here. Yeah, it was it was it was actually very interesting that they never that that was never like um, followed to the T. Because with Vulcans and Romulans, green you have Island, to. Yeah, green yeah. blood, baby. Uh, on generations, um, I got to kill a Romulan. Um, hey. <laughs> You you lived the dream there. Oh man, you know that that was back. You know when I was like you know had my issues with Romulans, and now actually I love Romulans. I I actually uh, you're like let me kill them. I I actually you know I really got into like the Romulan culture and stuff. Mm-hmm. They're really cool, you know, and and uh, you know just the older I I get too. It's like you know when I was younger I like I was saying it was like on track when I was on the show. I was like. I want to be a Klingon, and then now that I'm an old, you know, grouchy man who, you know, wants to be left alone, <laughs> I'm just like, I totally get Romulans. <laughs> Are they the get off my lawn? Uh, yeah, alien race? pretty much. <laughs> you know, that neutral zone is their lawn. <laughs> you, yeah, get off my neutral zone. <laughs> so I'm going to unpin everything. Okay. So, <clears throat> but to get my hair did, people. So, to get my hair did. One of the cool things that a lot of people probably don't know is on Next Gen, we had a back wig, lace wig, and then we would have different fronts. And these fronts would correspond with the ridges. Okay? So, if we would do the makeup like this, this would be a stopping point. Um, and I, I, you know, I'd, I'd send you, uh, to, to, uh, hair and they would, they would do your hair and they would look at you and go, okay, let's, let's go with a darker kind of, you know, hair for you. Um, and then we'll, you know, do a front and, you know, need to find front that will, you know, work with those ridges and whatever. So it was kind of this mix and match thing. Um, instead of having a bunch of custom wigs for every forehead that we we did we had different fronts that you know and it was yeah it was was cost effective and and you could get multiple multiple looks and i i've taken that idea um and and used it you know uh it's it's kind of like kit bashing you know like how the millennium falcon was you know (laughs) put together um Am I allowed to even mention Star Wars? Well, you just did. <laughs> Traitor. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're getting loopy. <laughs> All right. And this is something called Telesis Spirits. Okay. So I remember once again it was that episode with Rick Pascal. Um, as the son of Duras, and how, oh gosh, I did this beautiful makeup on him. He was such a lovely, lovely guy. I mean, he was a joy to work with. He really enjoyed being on Star Trek. And mm. anyway, it, it, I'd get him back, you know. So, what we'd do is we'd send, send our Klingons off to get wigged, mm. then they'd come back, and then, you know, we'd know what color their 
hair was. Mm -hmm. So we would appropriately give him, you know, facial hair to match. Anyway, every time Rick came back, <sighs> this person who was doing his hair had the lace front coming way down here. And he looked at Jim Morrison. It was like Jim Morrison <laughs> Klingon. And, and so I had to like lift it back up and put it where it's supposed to go, like here, not down like that, but here, right in mm. front of the ear. Oh my God. Yeah, um, it was weird. Uh, the time we got to uh, first contact, it, it, it was odd because like, you know, we had we had uh, some different people working on it. It wasn't like the 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 Trek family that we had already, and so you know, it was it was dealing with people who hadn't worked Trek. Like, mm. um, you know, once again, I don't want to talk out of turn, but uh, yeah. Um, Have, have more time? Was it was it slower schedules, or were you just as, as fast paced as the shows? It it seemed the same. Uh, it seemed pretty fast paced, you know. Like, um, I mean, we had a little playtime and stuff like developing things, you know. But it's still it it, it it wasn't like other features that I've been on and stuff like that. Like, yeah, it it. It definitely was a high pace thing because, you know, we did have a lot of, you know, we had the same actors. And so a lot of it was just like, you know, boom, 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 you know, cookie cutter kind of, you know, like attitude on things. You know, we we, we knew what we were doing <laughs> kind of thing. It's interesting because uh, one of the things um, these, as Mike Westmore called them, uh, tchotchkes. Um, so... Mike Jr., uh, Mike Westmore's son. Um, him and I, it's funny, like, we have a lot in common, like, weird things. Like, I love model kits, and he loves model kits. And he, you know, he was a fan of the show and of Star Wars as well and stuff. So he took some of his unused model kits and brought them in and laid them down and did flat molds of these model kits for these tchotchkes, as Mike called them, uh, that would glue onto the board, you know, costume mm. and, you know, onto the, like, you know, board mechanical bits and, you know, it just, and it was interesting. Um, <clears throat> so I always, I knew what, I knew what the parts were. Like there was a fuselage to a B-wing fighter um, that, that um, I grabbed for my Klingon Borg. So his mechanical Borg eye is actually um, a uh, fus fuselage to a B-wing fighter from uh, Return of the Jedi. Wow. And, uh, but wow. one of the pieces <laughs> that we weren't really supposed to use was from the large X-wing fighter model kit. It was the R2-D2 that was two part. You would snap them together and, you know, like do up the seams and paint them, you know, with the white and the blue and the chrome. Well, so it, the phone would be ran in black, and so we'd have these little black R2-D2s, and I would strategically hide R2s on my Borgs. <laughs> and I, a while ago at an IMATS, um, International Makeup Artist uh, Trade Show, um, Mike Westmore had a bunch of us up talking about the show, and, and it was interesting because... Um, I had worked on all all the shows except all the movies. I haven't worked on all the movies. I, I just um, I, I was on uh, Next Gen, DS9, Voyager, and Enterprise, and and some of the people he had up there, you know, they could only say that they worked, you know, on DS9 and Voyager, you know, and then uh, so yeah, it was it was interesting. So I had a little bit of a you know street cred there, but anyway, uh, I, I digress. Um, I, I told that story at the panel, and I looked over at Mike, and, and I don't I couldn't read him. I couldn't read what he was, the look he was giving me. But um, it was probably like, I hate you, dude. <laughs> anyway, He's I like, told you, you not what? to. <laughs> it's like, like, I told you not to. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. Okay, let me get that lace down a little bit more. 
I mean, once again, this is this doesn't need to be on 12 hours. But, yeah. Um, you know what's interesting? Is the actor who played the Klingon Borg in First Contact mm. actually lives up here in the high desert oh, as really? well, yeah. I've been wanting to get together with him and do, like, a, a really nice display. It's it's interesting because there's, like, a lot of fans out there of him. And and so, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is a Klingon without eyebrows. That is that is fandom right there. Yeah. Because fandom will attach on to the biggest actor in Trek and the actor that may have one line, mm -hmm. but a very memorable moment. And, um, yeah, you got fans. It's pretty amazing. Did you work on that in that DS9 episode where they where they revisit the the trouble with Tribbles? No, way? no, I, I really wanted to work on that episode, but I, I was, I forgot where I was. Um, Probably doing something not as cool. <laughs> <laughs> what was the What was the episode that you got the um, that you got the Emmy for? Um, uh, it's uh, distant uh, distant voices, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that was uh, that was uh, one with a uh, uh, really odd episode um, with uh, Sadig. Um, Yes, thank you. Uh, well, back then it was Sadig. Uh, and, and, uh, but yeah, it, his character gets zapped by this, this creature and, and uh, alien. And, <laughs> and it caused like all this weird memory stuff and like he starts aging. And that was, yeah. I remember that. One. That was a weird episode. Hmm. Okay, so. You have facial hair, so I'm just going to glue on top, which, you know, I'll, of course, help you get this taken care of later. Um, so. spirit, spirit gum? Yeah, it's, oh, yeah, I, this, I is really, yeah, yeah, this is a really it's... good one. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little pricey, but, you know, it's, it's the best, uh, in my opinion. It's the Telesis Spirit. It's 25 bucks for that. Mm. But it's, it's like gold. Well, I'm, see, I'm, I'm from the old school where spirit gum... We used it in theater, mm -hmm. and you know we. So it was probably the talk of the toxic version. <laughs> Spirit gum or today they'd be like, "You used what?" Hmm. Okay, so yeah, this. Uh, I wish we had this particular gum um, back on track. We did a lot of hair work. <clears throat> mm. And it wasn't just Klingons. I mean, we, we had sideburns. A lot of people don't realize, but not everyone has pointed sideburns, Starfleet sideburns. So, um, yeah, we'd have to hand lay sideburns on Starfleet hmm. members. Huh. Yeah. The more you know. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Well, aren't you a handsome Klingon? <laughs> All right, now I'm, I'm just gonna, um, what am I gonna do? I'm going to take a bit of this here and lean forward just a bit sure. yeah there we go just you're tall that's the other thing Klingons are hella tall you know like it's that intimidation factor yeah and then those damn boots that just made it even you know right, right. crazier those lifts did you ever work with anybody who had not not to go a negative route, but have you ever worked with anybody who ended up being more claustrophobic than they thought they would be in the makeup? I've had a couple actors um, 
who thought they couldn't act. You know, they're like, oh, my face is covered, you know. Mm. And, um, but it wasn't on Star Trek. And it's weird, like, Mike and I got talking, Mike Westmore. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's funny, like, he told me some horror stories about, like, some of the actors who, who came in. I guess some, some guy came in and he was one of the easiest aliens. He was a Vulcan. And, mm -hmm. And after lunch, he couldn't find him. And they found bits of him on the way to the parking lot <laughs> um, where he ripped off an ear, ripped off another ear, mm -hmm. um, his yeah, bits of eyebrows, uh, the oh $5,000 lace wig was in a trash bin, oh, no. you know? Yeah, so... <sighs> yeah. Oh, my God. But, you know, the thing is, it's like you... You got a job on something called Star Trek. Do your freaking research. <laughs> it's like, how do you know? How how do you not know that a Vulcan is a prosthetic makeup? I, you know, and why would you rip that stuff off like that? Yeah, I it's mean, like, come on. Yeah, it, it just that, that's unprofessional. Yeah, well, that's, I've, I've know, heard. Yeah, I've I've heard of actors doing that. You know, mm -hmm. um. I think a lot of times, like the, these behind the scene things, um, where where you see like an actor peeling something off, it's like, uh, oh, you know, that's not, you, you know, you don't do that, you yeah. know, and it's it should have a warning label kind of thing going on here, you know. So. Skin is more sensitive than people realize. Yeah, I mean, do you want to come back the next day? <laughs> you know, that's right. you know, that's that's kind of the reality of it. Yeah. I uh, wanted to mention Friends Beauty Supply and FX Warehouse for, you know, taking orders online and shipping them out. So we have makeup and solvent and remover and prosthetics. So thank you guys. I mean, you know, I have to give a shout out to the people who made this happen. You know, I'm just using this stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, anyone could be doing this. Not anyone. Yeah, well, anyone, but I, I've got the stories. <laughs> Not an Emmy Award winner, winner with the stories and the skills to match. Come on. Aw. Give yourselves props, buddy. You're, you're, you're awesome. And you, you, I, it's an honor to be able to add you to the list of the amazing makeup artists that I've worked with, but you, my friend, are the best. Aw. I'm, I'm making a wash out of these cream colors, these rubber mask grease colors. These are the Canem colors uh, from uh, uh, PPI and Greg Canem, um, amazing makeup artist. Um, everyone should know who he is. If not, do some research. Greg Canem. Not, yeah, it's, it's an M, not an N at the end. Anyway, so... Uh, I'm just making a wash with drinkable alcohol, actually. This is uh, basically Everclear. What do you do with a drunken Klingon? Scotty, <laughs> shot glasses, please. <laughs> now, not to take away from, from Trek, but what other, what other sci-fi shows have you worked on? Or projects in general? Well, there's something... Uh, my buddy Paul Jones was doing, and he brought me in for the L.A. lag of it. Um, we, we did some reshoots and stuff, and it was an honor. It was very innovative. It, it wow, it was a show called Defiance, mm. and it, it's sad it didn't continue. It just, it was such a, a really cool premise. I, I liked that a lot. That'll come off in a week or two. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was like, now, that's on the auditions are coming on. <laughs> What's interesting about this is the spirit gum um, there is it's an old theater thing mm. where you dry your teeth off, use gum, mm. tack it, and then use grease paint. That's, we never did that in the theater. That's, that's <laughs> like an old, old Thing that no one mm. does anymore because they, now we have these lovely teeth stains, mm. and uh, so 
when I was on Maze Runner Scorch Trials, um, that was a technique that uh, we did for the cranks. I was like, <laughs> because I knew the, the spirit dumb thing on the teeth, um, I was like, uh, you know, because we were using the teeth stains and they weren't staying that long. And I'm like, hey, you got to put the spirit gum down first and then put the teeth. And so, yeah, it, it, uh, they stayed longer, you know, but <laughs> I, I mean, you st- be careful with this stuff, but you know, it, it, that's what yeah. we do. Anyway, okay, now you can close, you yeah. So that, that helps because Klingons, they don't have, you know, yeah. And according to DS9, they smell like lilacers. <laughs> they have an earthy smell to them. <laughs> you remember? That was uh, Trials and Tribulations, wasn't it? Oh, um, I think so. gosh. No, wait. It was some episode where Somehow, I think Bashir ended up talking to Worf about how he smelled or something like that. Mm-hmm. Something. Yeah. Open? No. Oh. Just uh, losing losing the, the beard a bit. All right, sir. I mean, this is about as far as I can go with this. I mean, you know, we call it anything over our allotted time of marathon makeup. (laughs) So, you know, we could fluff this up a little bit. That's another thing. I I, cling on hair. It it went from really beautiful, stylish in Star Trek VI, like very like Japanese imperial looking, you know. And here's something that most people don't know. But all the hair ornaments were designed to be weapons, like the Japanese court. Oh, ah, you could, uh-huh. and ah. like poison-dipped hairpins and things like that. Well, I'm I'm honored. Uh, thank you for letting me talk and talk and talk and and do makeup and and revisit a, a, a huge portion of my life. I mean, you know, like ten years of actually getting paid to do Star Trek. You know, um, and and uh, you know. Fulfilling a childhood dream. So, yeah. Uh, do you want to do a shameless plug for any products or things? Well, um, there's this guy, uh, um, Thomas Superna, who makes uh, amazing prosthetic paint that has been used throughout the Star Trek franchise um, and in, in the theme parks, too. In fact, um, the, mm-hmm. uh, the Vegas uh, uh, experience, they were buying this for their, their actors as well. Um, and, you know, big shout out to Mike Westmore. Uh, thank you so much for, you know, giving me a, a shot. You know, I was one of the youngest people I think um, he hired, you know, way back then. You know, it's like, and, and I, yeah, I was scared to death the, the entire time. I was just kind of scared to death, <laughs> actually. But, uh, um, and then uh, a Premier Products for all their, their love and support and effects warehouse. And uh, yeah, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll Beauty yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, there's uh, some beautiful, um, you know, people in our industry who, who you know, um, are there when you need them, you know, and uh, when you're not too. <laughs> <Yeah>. Huh? <laughs> anyway. <laughs>